So folks, here we are at the, uh, the project for Valle de Paz in Sao Paulo. Um, and here's the Solar Cities 3 IBC biodigester that I helped build over a month ago. It's now functioning pretty well and I'm going to give you a little tour of it. Um, I just want to, uh, first of all, lift up this flap here and show you where we are. We're right in the middle of one of the biggest favelas in Sao Paulo. This is Jajin Nakamura, which is inside the area of Jajin Angela. And uh, it's this big high density favela. And uh, kind of tough living here. But nice people. <laughs> and so <laughs> here's the digester. It's the, it's, we built it following Thomas's. Uh, advice and everyone on the forum as well um, pretty much to the letter with only a couple of minor modifications the main one being that we've put the sink and the insincorator on top of the digester so that basically every day people just come up here with their with their food waste and they put it straight in the sink and just turn the turn the insincorator on here and it goes straight into the top of the digester and uh, here's the digester and we thought that was easier than doing it here because we've got the washing machine and stuff here as well. This is like a compound, so there's various different families. Um, they're all part of the same family. They're all brothers and sisters and cousins and things. They live there. There's another house here. There's another three houses underneath where we are now. So there's quite a lot of kitchen scraps that come up here and feeds in. There it is. And so <clears throat> they come in here every day and they, they feed the kitchen scraps. <coughs> and this is the out outlet for the gas and so when they feed they turn this off and they open this valve here up and this lets out the digestate as the new stuff goes in and this comes from the overflow in the side of the tank there it comes out and actually normally what we do is we catch it um, in a bottle down here because we've been using this as a pretty potent fertilizer in the growing beds here we've made as well but this is just a little overflow just in case you know for the times when we've run out of bottles because we've filled them all up and we uh, we want it to go on into the into the normal sewer pipe. I'll leave that for now. So there's some bottles back there of digestate that we've we've uh, stored up, and we water it down ten to one, and we use it in the uh, these garden beds that we built here. And there's a lot more downstairs. I'll show you in a minute. And things are growing pretty well. Um, this one's not the best one because it's uh, had a problem with the overflow, which we've just fixed. See, there's a little drain off point there, but I won't go into too much detail. Anyway, it's working really well. This is another plant that was dying, and we gave it a little bit of the digestate, the biofertilizer, and look at it. It's, in two weeks, it's, it's grown a lot. So, when we're not feeding the, uh, the digester, we leave this here open. So the gas comes out, and it comes through, and runs on into this gas reservoir here. Um, this is a little optional flame test valve we've got here, which we might light and show you in a minute. And uh, you can tell that there's good pressure and there's plenty of gas. And so the gas comes down here, and you can hear it. If you get really close, you can hear it creaking. And it goes tick, 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 tick as the pressure builds up and, uh, and gradually fills this until you can just see it here, um, this pipe here. It's now starting to push some of the water out and into this overflow. Just a second, Ruthie, I'm just making a film. So, um, <laughs> I'm just being called for lunch. So here the water's coming out. The pressure builds up little by little by little and then suddenly woof, it goes. You can see it running. And now you can see the bubbles are just starting to stop. And it comes through into this 200 litre overflow tank here where we've got our sump pump. And when the level builds up to a certain amount, the sump pump will click on. We'll probably hear it in a minute. And then the sump pump pumps up through this tube up into this top IBC here, which is the, the water reservoir. And this is what gives us pressure on the gas holder. You see the water comes out of here. This is always open and connected down here into the bottom of the gas holder here. So it displaces. The gas comes in. Gas comes in and displaces the water, pushes the water out through this tube here, which goes into this here, then the, the sump pump kicks in and fires it off up into the top. 
and then this gives the pressure back down again. Now we've added a second tube. We've added a second tube here. This tube here. This is also connected open to to the to the circuit down here. Now this tube comes all the way up here and and is connected to this gas outlet here. You can just see that's the gas outlet. That's where the gas comes out. And this tube runs on to uh, in fact, this is, this is one of two outlets we have, so actually at the moment this is blocked off. Um, this is a potential second gas outlet, but this is open, this is shut, so this is open to the inside of the tank. So effectively this is a circuit that connects to the whole of the inside of the tank. We have a second gas outlet over there in the other corner. You can just see in the corner, that's the one that connects to the kitchen. So why do we have this second tube? Well, it's a site level. So here you can see, that's the water level inside the tank. And so in the hour or so that I've been here fiddling, um, we've generated that much more gas. So you can see that it's starting to heat up here, the day's getting hot, and so the gas is really starting to produce. And so we've got about maybe a third of our thousand litre tank is now full of gas. And so this gas line that you can see here in the corner, it comes out, it comes all the way around. We've got a line that comes around the top there. You follow it down, down the corner, down the steps. So it comes down there. That brown pipe just on the corner behind this, behind the drain pipe, you can see is the gas line. Comes all the way down, and the gas line comes down here, and. Um, then it comes in through this tube here into the kitchen. Now actually what we need is a... So the vertical pipe that you can see here is actually um, a water trap that collects any water that the gas is carrying. It comes down here and collects in this vertical pipe underneath. There's another valve at the bottom I didn't quite manage to film and we open that up periodically to tap off the water. And here's the connection to the normal the normal gas bottle. So I'll take you in and have a look at the kitchen in a minute. This is this costs about 50 PIs, Brazilian PIs, and it lasts about, I don't know, about two weeks. In this kitchen they cook for eight people at least every day. So that's normal, normal cooking gas and this is biogas. So let's have a look at the kitchen. <laughs> Oi pessoal! Tá bom? Tô filmando um vídeo para mostrar os resultados do biogás. Eu fiz lá em cima e agora eu quero mostrar o fogão. Pode encender o fogão para mim? E o biogás está chegando até aqui? Sim. Aquele fogão? Sim. Pode encender esse fogão, Rum? Acendeu o fogão? Acendeu. So, so here we've got, here we've got lunch being cooked. This is all on normal gas, and um, we've been tinkering with the biogás, so we haven't been using it yet. So this is a uh, gas stove that we found, which was the most suitable that we could find locally in. Fabio drilled out the jet in it, the restriction, there was a restriction jet here, so he, he drilled this out so now the pressure can get through and we've got this peculiar arrangement with, oh, wait, 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 no, no. with different jets. What can you see there? Bye, 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 bye. Yeah, so there you go. You can see it's a... Uh, It's pretty, it's pretty happy, and there's a good, there's a good heat there. And um, we've we've made coffee on this so far. We've cooked eggs on it. We've even boiled rice on it. And the, uh, I think we've got a little bit more work to do <coughs> to improve the gas pressure and perhaps also um, take some of the water out of the line. But uh, results are good. It's uh, it seems to be working well now. That's that's pretty hot. So um, yeah, the hope is we can we can optimize this system a little bit more. And, Now we've got a good pressure <laughs> to get out how to do it. Cooking on gas. Time for coffee. Café do Bill Guys.
Tá feliz? Nossa, muito feliz. Foi rápido também, foi tipo 4 minutos. minutos. It's like 4 minutes to boil that water, it's quick. Agora? Tá bom? <laughs> I've also kept a, a record of how much it cost us to make this whole system, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, the, uh, put the results of that up online as well so you can all see. And we'll work out, you know, the cost effectiveness of this system here in Brazil and potentially replicate it with some other groups. We've got a little bit of money left over from our project and we might, um, we might do some training and build another couple of these systems. And uh, we might even have a way to get these IBC containers for free. So that's all going to help. The main costs that are going to be difficult to resolve with the system is the sump pump, which we can get here in Brazil okay, and the insincorator. These are all imported into Brazil, and anything that's imported into Brazil and is not manufactured are all very, very expensive. So um, we're going to have to find a way of um, getting access to insincorators here for less money. Usually at the moment it's me smuggling them in in my suitcase every time I take a trip out of Brazil, so <laughs> that's going to put a limit to how many of these we can build, but all in all the system is starting to work really well, um, we had a few teething problems with it, we had um, these, uh, these parts here weren't quite sealed properly, there wasn't enough thread tape on them so the water system was leaking, so we had to shut everything down and solve the water system, but Fabio did that pretty well on his own, and um, now it seems to be functioning pretty good, so... We're cooking on it, and um, I think now all that we need to do really is increase the amount we're feeding it as well. They've been away for, for New Year's, so they haven't been here. Um, and Fabio was saying at the moment, because everybody's away, they've only been feeding it really like one of these of material each day, which I think is not very much at all. So I'd be interested to know, you know, what's the optimum quantity in terms of buckets full of, you know, buckets full of organic waste or, or, uh, or kilos that we should be aiming to put into it. If anyone can let me know, that would be, that'd be good. We're just going to keep increasing the food, I think, and uh, see how much we get from it. I'm thinking we can put a good couple of these large buckets into it a day. We can certainly get plenty of organic material from the neighbours. We're going to talk to the school as well about getting them to separate their organic waste for us, and we'll bring groups of school kids here and teach them about the system and how it works. And... Uh, We're building a new, a new project, a new building for this project. It's actually a music project um, with, uh, with young kids in the favela, giving them uh, kind of alternative cool things to get involved with that doesn't involve getting into the drug gangs. And so um, we've got some money to build a new, a new building. We're going to build a big earth, three-story earth, earth bag and concrete frame building with a big permaculture garden on the roof. So we'll be building another biogas system there and looking for lots of other urban growing spaces which can use the biofertilizer because I think the more we feed it the more we'll produce but all in all it's been a great success and I'd like to thank um, Thomas and Warren and everyone on the forum who's who's given us lots of advice and help and um, thanks for the inspiration and the support and looking forward to building the next ones bye